Why are boats in the U.S. so expensive? In this video, we're going to have a call with boat buying and selling expert Gary Fretz to help us answer that question. Gary has dozens of years of industry experience buying and selling yachts as a boat broker, and he's got the experience to answer this question for us. Thanks for uh, being on the call with me today, Gary. Um, the last video went really well, and I had a follow-up question that I thought you might be able to help out with, which is, why are boats in the U.S. so expensive as compared to many of the other listings we see around? There's a bunch of theories and speculation out there, but um, none of them, they, they all just seem like guesses. So from your point of view, with the industry knowledge, like, maybe explain this phenomenon to us. Sure. Yeah, and they are more expensive in the U.S. And it's mostly because of supply and demand. There are more buyers in North America and South America from the U.S. and Canada than any other place, just about anywhere. And so there is a finite supply of boats. Most of them are centered around Florida or Annapolis. And for every popular model that's available for sale in each of those places, there's like 30 buyers a month that come and look at them. And if you go to the Caribbean, for example, to see similar models, there are 30 boats for every buyer walking the dock. So that ratio is inverted down there. So it's really just all supply and demand. And because there's more demand up here, prices tend to be higher. You know, there's a book called the Buck Book, B-U-C. And it's used by the banks for many years to determine loan value. And the bug book says there are locational variances in prices such that the Pacific Northwest in America is the sees the highest prices for boats mm. anywhere in the world, wow. actually. And they're 35 percent higher than the baseline area, which is considered to be Florida. Mm. California has a premium of about 20 percent because, well, there's just a lot of buyers there and not a lot of boats. In the, and sorry, New England and New York, it's around 15 to 20 percent higher than Florida. And if you want to find the lowest prices for a given model in the same condition, the Caribbean is probably the lowest price area in the world. And you can see discounts of 15 to 25 percent if you go down there. So it's all really supply and demand. Wow. OK. And. and how does Europe factor into that? Because it seems like you can find some cheaper than U.S. boats over there, too. Yeah. Well, those boats in Europe are very influenced by seasonal price tendencies because their season is very short. It goes from June 1 till about September 30th. So you can see big demand for boats right before June. And then after September 30th, when nobody really wants to buy because their season is ending, you can pick up some good deals there. Now, just remember that you always want to compare apples to apples. And in Europe, a lot of those really cheap boats that you see are what I call vanilla, plain, stripped out charter boats. And they don't have a lot of options on them. They're just like basic boat possible. And they're usually owned by tax partnerships. So, and the maintenance level, except for the major companies like Mooring Sun Sail Dream Yachts, is not the greatest. They, they kind of cheat Charlie everything. So you, you have to really check those boats at survey when you're buying. Mm -hmm. Is the same also somewhat true of the charter boats that are coming out of the Caribbean? Or do those tend to have a little bit more with regard to amenities on board? Well, the Caribbean sees more equipment than Europe in general. But, you know, what I found amazing is that the Europeans consider air conditioning to be unnatural. You know, when they <laughs> when they go cruising, they, they want to, like, turn the air conditioning off. They want to, like, get back to nature. And they don't like air conditioning. They, they'd rather just sit there, I guess, and sweat. But, but the boats in the Caribbean that are in the areas where Americans go who demand air conditioning you can find air conditioning on a lot of the boats those hubs are mostly tortola which is the british virgin islands somewhat in saint martin but all those other french islands like guadeloupe martinique saint uh saint bart's they really don't have a lot of extras on them all right so they're 
seasonally depending, you can get cheaper boats in Europe, and you can get definitely get cheaper boats in the Caribbean. There's also some seasonal bonuses there. It's just important Absolutely. to keep in mind that they might be a little bit more stripped down. So, yes, they're cheaper, but with less things than right. some of the U.S. boats. But right. it doesn't mean they're not a deal. Yes. And in the Caribbean, the high season is December 1st through about May 30th. And that's when most catamarans are used, actually, in the world. And so the price of catamarans follows that seasonal demand. So what we see happening is most cruisers end their cruise in May, and they'll list their boat for sale then. Most charter companies plan to phase the boats out June, July, August, and so they'll list them in May, and then the least buying happens in the summer, June, July, August. That's when you want to buy because there's the least amount of buying competition. Hmm. We often see the best deals there in the summer, and especially also when the hurricanes are churning up the Atlantic Ocean because... Mm -hmm. Recently, there are less choices for hurricane-safe harbors because there are just more and more boats going down there. So sellers have sometimes a hard time finding a safe place to keep their boat. And so this further puts downward price pressure on boats in the summer. So you always want to buy in the summer. Now, many times we see the best deals gone by mid-September because what happens is a lot of people in preparation for buying for the high season in December will start their buying activities in late August, early September. And of course, naturally, they go after the best deals. And so the best deals can be gone by September 30th. So it pays to shop in those low season months. And you'd think that people would learn to take advantage of this situation, but they don't. And, you know, I often get calls from buyers like in October, November, or even December, and they say something like, yeah, I told my wife I was going to get a boat by Christmas, and I just got real busy, and I didn't have time, and so, well, here we are. And, uh, you know, on a $250,000 boat, they could pay easily twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 more and speculators, like I used to be one, would simply buy some popular models in the summer, clean them up, store them in a safe place, and wait until October, November, which when we see the highest prices in anticipation of the Caribbean high season. And, you know, we I made a living doing that for a while. Now, those margins have been squeezed down a little bit, and I've, I'm putting my money in my charter company now, so I, I don't do it anymore. But it's a viable business, and but you should take advantage of these seasonal price tendencies by buying in the summer, and if you want to sell, sell in the fall or the early winter. Um, if, if I may, I'd like to tell you a story that illustrates when to buy, where to buy, and what to buy, if All I right. may. Um, yeah. About two years ago, I was approached by this man. He was an architect, and he was retiring, and he said, you know, I've always wanted to do this. I don't have any experience and I have $250,000 and I don't want to, for my capital to be depleted. So when I go to resell the boat, I want it to maintain value. So help me find the right boat for that. And I said, okay. I told him you need to get an owner version because those are in the biggest demand in the catamaran market. And owner versions are when you have one big owner suite on one in one hall and they build in more cabinets so you can store your stuff away and you, you don't live in clutter. And that's why cruisers prefer these. But only 10 percent of catamarans are owner versions. So sometimes there are none on the market. But this particular buyer just happened to be shopping in the summer. So I said, look, let's buy here in the summer, even though I know you don't need it until next December. Let's buy in an out-of-the-way place, and let's buy an owner version, the right boat. And so we found a Leopard 40 in Belize, where nobody wants to go to buy boats, and he bought this boat for $230,000. So, um, by the way, I own America's oldest sailing school here in Miami, Castle Harbor, and we got him trained up. We got him on the boat. He went down to Belize. He cruised around Belize, Mexico, Guatemala, 
He had a great time. But he calls me a year and a half later in January. And he said, Gary, I can't believe it. My old employer wants me back and they're going to give me a 70% raise and a three-year contract. But I love the boat. I Hmm. want to go back on on the boat. Should I store it? Should I put it in charter? What should I do? And I said, look, don't put it in charter. They're just going to run the engine hours up and ding the boat up. And yeah, you're going to make some money, but the value will probably go down in a corresponding amount. So just sell the boat. That was in January when he called me. And that's the time of year when you get the highest prices. And in fact, there were no owner versions of the Leopard 40 available. So I listed that boat and I sold it in one hour for $265,000. So he, he paid me a little commission. He had that when he bought the boat, it didn't include a dinghy. So, you know, he spent 5000 on the dinghy, but he walked away with a nice chunk of change in his pocket. And so he was a very happy camper. And this illustrates that you should buy in an out of the way place. You should buy the right kind of boat, an owner version, if you can afford the premium. And you should buy at the right time of the year, which is usually the summer months and sell in the winter months. That's how to get the best deal. Right. So it's it's not just why are boats in the U.S. so expensive, where are they not expensive? It's also when are they least expensive? And that's equally as much of a part of the equation as location. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. This should be useful for, you know, the people. I, I, a lot of our watchers are people who are planning on buying a boat in the nearish you know, future, a year, two years out. So it's good for them to know ahead of time as opposed to waiting till it's, it's going to cost them the most. Uh, another question is like, if, if boats in the U.S. tend to be listed at a higher price than the Caribbean or some other places, does that mean that there's also more wiggle room with regard to negotiate, negotiating the price down? Or is that not the case? Generally, there's more wiggle room in the out of the way places because it's a thinner market. They may wait three months, four months to get an offer. Whereas in the US, the same boat at the same price in the same condition might have five offers in one month. And so when the seller sees all these questions and inquiries coming in, they think, hmm, well, maybe my price is too low, <laughs> you know? Whereas in these out of the way places where nobody really wants to have to go, if they can help it, they, you know, they're a little more desperate to sell. So they, they will entertain a lower offer than the typical American or Canadian seller with a boat located there right. in America. So it's, it's back to that seller's market versus buyer's market. Um, right. Does that also explain why you in the U.S. and similar places you see boats that are listed extremely high? So high that you're like, I could buy a new version of a comparable boat for less than what you have. How do you ever intend to sell this boat for that price? Right. Yeah, we see that a lot. And a lot of sellers are not real serious about selling. But if the right buyer came along and would pay their price, they'll sell. So they get talked into listing the boat. And they, you know, they paid X for the boat. So they go, well, let's see, I added air conditioning and generator. And, you know, on a 45 foot boat, that's 20,000 bucks for each of those to to air condition the whole boat and get a generator big enough to run that. And so that's 40,000 more. And a lot of them add some other things like a super deluxe dinghy or solar panels, wind generators and so on. And so they want to recoup that. So they go, oh, okay, let's, uh, we need to factor that in because when I bought the boat, I paid X, but I added $60,000. So let's, you know, ask what I paid plus 60 plus a little wiggle room. And that's where you get these crazy high prices because you don't get back dollar for dollar what you put in. If you put in 40,000 for air conditioning and generator, you may only get 50% of what you pay back because that's just the way it goes, you know? The market just won't always pay what you put into it dollar for dollar, unless, of course, that's a very unique boat and we find the right buyer who's willing to pay that premium to get that boat right now. So some of these last minute buyers, like on December 1, that got to have it for Christmas for his wife, okay, they may end up paying dollar for dollar. And it happens. It doesn't happen a lot, but I see it happening. Right. 
another question back talking about seasonal variation. Just curious, do, does the U.S. also have seasonal variation, or is that more? Absolutely. Is, is that nice? Yeah. yeah. Um, in Annapolis, there that is a hub for catamaran. And, you know, their season is June 1 through end of September, just like in Europe. And yes, they have a little sort of mini season there where they'll have people that want a boat for the summer. So they'll they'll pay. They want it. So in May, June, they'll they'll pay high prices to get it. And so the market up there is relatively strong in the late spring, early summer. And that but those boats that you know, went through the summer and chartered or were happily used, their prices uh, go down. They kind of crash in the fall. Okay. So it's, yeah. So even if you're bound and determined to buy within the U.S., buying at the right time of the year in the right spot can still save you a chunk of cash. Right. Okay. Right. Right. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to mention one other thing that, that I see. France is the number one builder of yachts nowadays. Uh, America used to be number one, but our U.S. Congress, the geniuses there, passed a law in 1991 called the luxury tax. It was a 10 percent tax just on new boats in America, and no buyers would pay that tax, none. And so it killed our boat building industry. We went from number one in the world to now I think we're six or seven at best. It killed 33,000 jobs. You know, all these people that had good, high paying jobs. Well, that went out the drain. But at the same time, France realized, hey, let's subsidize the building of yachts in order to help our overseas territories. So they passed this law called the Pons Law, P-O-N-S, Loi Pons. And it subsidized the building of boats. It subsidized investors financing the purchase of boats and putting them into tax shelter programs so that the overseas territories, such as Tahiti, St. Martin, Guadeloupe, Martinique, would have all this inventory of brand new, beautiful yachts, and it would provide jobs for mechanics, for boat cleaners, for charter brokers, for base personnel, and so on. And it really did help their overseas territories. And so the U.S. went down. <laughs> And France became number one. Now, let me just tell you how some of these things work. These CPAs in France put together these partnerships, and typically they'll have, say, 10 partners in this boat. Now, they don't get to use the boat. They don't know port from starboard. They, they just do it for the tax benefits because they get accelerated depreciation and some other benefits by doing this. So it's really good for them. And the CPAs that put together these partnerships, they call me at the end of five years when the program ends. It's a 66-month program. And they say something like this. Uh, Gary, uh, we have this Lagoon 450. And, uh, well, tell me what the uh, lowest priced uh, 2012 is in the world. And I'll say, well, it's 350000 they'll say, okay, uh, price it at 349 And I want to sell it within one month because I don't want to pay all these carrying costs. And now, I'm really busy because I got 50 yachts here, and uh, don't bother me too much. Just get it sold and, and call me up. Yeah. <laughs> and so this is what these guys do. They're, they're emotionless businessmen in the business of tax shelters. And it's not like dealing with a seller in Canada or America where they want to squeeze every single penny mm -hmm. out of the boat. Right. No, they're just – they're looking at dollars, and if they – or euros. And th if they take a few less euros when they sell the boat, well, it's no big deal because they just get a bigger tax write off for their clients. And so, you know, it's like you find some of the best deals if you can deal with one of these French tax program boats. So I always urge people to look for those boats. You find those boats in Martinique, Guadeloupe, St. Martin, Tahiti. And the only drawback is that their electrical systems are 220 volt instead of 110, but you can solve most of those challenges with uh, some transformers. Yeah. You know, if you're going to bring it back to the U.S., if you're just going to cruise the Caribbean, most of the major hmm. marinas have dual electrical systems, so it's not really a problem if you're using that's it down there. Yeah, that's interesting. One last thing, and this is a perception that I have. 
and it may may or may not be true, but I get the uh, impression that some of the larger name boat brokers, especially for catamarans in the U.S., have prices that are even high by American standards. They do, and these entities have much higher expenses than some of their competition. And so they have to amortize this cost of extra websites, going to boat shows, print media, and things like that by getting a higher price. So they're going to attempt to get a high price. And, and many times they do. Like they'll, They know if they just wait until late September, October, November, when the Johnny-come-latelys come into the market, they'll be able to get those premiums. So, uh, you know, if you don't mind paying fifteen to 30000 more for the same boat, well, you know, deal with them. But there are other agencies, such as mine, Yachts International, where we keep our expenses very low. We don't have the same setup as they do. And, and so we, we think we can help save money. And that's what I'm all about. And by the way, I have a ebook that I've been working on for about 23 years called Insider Secrets to Buying Catamarans. I'll happily send it to anybody that's interested. Just, you know, contact me and I'll send it to your email address. Yeah. Gary, um, I, I, Gary sent me this it, and I've read it twice now, I think. And it's not a super long read. You can definitely knock it out in a fairly short amount of time, but it's very information dense. And that's why I've read it twice. It's it's not a lot of fluff, but it's a lot of content. Thanks. And, you know, I wanted to mention one other tool that we have that I think helps you buy smarter. And it's a website that's only available to professionals in the business like me. It's not cheap. It costs a lot. About 700 a month is what I pay for it, soldboats.com. And what it has is every price of every yacht sold on the main multiple listing system since 1998. So if you come to me and you say, hey, um, tell me what Lagoon 450s of the model year 2011, 2012 have been selling for in the past year, I can print up full details, the full list of where they were, what they were listed for, and what they sold for, how long it took to sell. I've got complete spec sheets with photos, videos, or, you know, all the information on the boat so that you can compare apples to apples and really know what the selling prices are doing. And I'm happy to send lists of these. Just just contact me and say, hey, I'm considering a whatever, a Lagoon 400 or a Leopard 40 or whatever. Tell me what they're trading for of the, this model year. And I'm happy to send that to you. And I think it's a smart way to know what the market is really doing. Yeah. And what's the... What's the best way for them to email you? What's your, what's your email or other contact info? Thank you. Yeah, my main email address is bigyachts, that's B-I-G-Y-A-C-H-T-S, at gmail.com. I watch that constantly and try to respond as fast as possible. You're welcome to call my cell phone. Um, I'm usually answering it Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. until 6 p.m., and you can also go to my website called largecatamaransforsale.com, and we have information about buying and selling boats there. We have some videos, and we have a search engine that will show you all of the catamarans between 35 feet and 100 feet for sale in the world. It's all right there. 98% of the boats that are listed for sale in the world are in that particular search engine database. And so you can save time by just going to the big databases. There's a lot of these little websites that have sprung up that, you know, have a fraction of the boats on them. And most of those listings are stale. That means they were actually sold four to six months ago and they really don't exist because they were sold. But the, the brokers leave them up there to try and get the calls and switch the buyers to whatever is available at that time. And so you just waste time with them. I, I would go with one of the majors that's dealing with the main MLS system. If you guys have questions uh, about any of the things we said here, feel free to leave the comments down below, or you can email either me or Gary. I'll put the con his contact info in the description, and we'll go through the comments, answer them, or we'll answer your emails. Thanks for joining, Gary. Uh, I really appreciate the you sharing the information with all of us, and the people who watch the channel uh, seem to like it too. 
All right, guys, I hope that was helpful for you. Let us know if there's any other questions you'd like for us to ask Gary. If you want to help support the channel, we have links below. We have a Patreon, so you can do it that way, or you can buy a shirt from us. We hand print these shirts at home. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching.